This is the Book Legion Podcast, where we review thought-provoking books to give our legionnaires the knowledge they need to dominate the next level of their life. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me on the Book Legion this week. This is your host, Ty. This week, I'm going to be reviewing the book, The Illusion of Money by Kyle Cease. So if you're not familiar with Kyle, who Kyle Cease is, Kyle Cease was uh, first and foremost a comedian that moved into acting. And since that time, has not kind of really transpired to become a life coach. He's someone that travels around the, the country talking to people, mostly about spirituality. He wrote this book, The Illusion of Money, Why Chasing Money is Stopping You from Receiving It. So it kind of piqued my interest. I knew him from his comedy days. I believe he's in that movie, 10 Things I Hate About You, which is really famous. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that he is. So I was interested to pick up his book because he's someone that I followed online. Uh, so I picked up this book and the whole premise of the book is about getting your money mind right. And so if you're someone who has more of a scarcity mentality or wanting to change your relationship with money, how you view money, how you view investing, how you look at career, how you look at your business, this is the right type of book for you. It's not a book on how to invest or make more money. It's more really about how do you start to attract money into your life and how do you start to have a different relationship with money. So I'm going to cover three uh, takeaways or my three favorite chapters of the book or ones that were impactful to me that I want to share with you guys. So let's jump right into that. So the first chapter I want to cover is chapter four, and that is the illusion of being broke. And I'm going to start with a quote because I think it sets the pretext for what the chapter is really about. The reason there's no quick fix that will pull you out of the illusion of security and into a space of actual security is because it's not something that you do. It's something that naturally shows up when you stop addictively reaching for things outside of yourself to feel safe. And so a lot of us do this. When it comes to money, it's interesting. We usually look at relationships we have with other people that actually have money to start to make ourselves feel safe. You ever hear someone talking about, oh, they have a rich aunt or a rich uncle, or that when somebody passes away, they're going to inherit this type of money. And I think that what Kyle starts to say in the beginning of this chapter is that a lot of people, they have this insecurity problem and they are always constantly looking for the next big thing, the next big crypto some type of false sense of security. And what he's saying is once you realize that you have an illusion, a false sense of illusion, when it comes to your security, then you're actually able to bring in security in, draw that into yourself. And I'll read you guys another little passage I think that really brings this home. When you stop trying to numb or fix the scared, painful emotions living inside of you, you discover there's nothing to run from. Those fears and difficult emotions are actually the gateway to true freedom and security. They are the gateway of real creativity. They are the gateway to you. When you are fully meeting your fearful emotions, you are experiencing it in a monetary pain of your illusion dissolving. You're feeling a layer of mental stagnancy burning up the presence of your awareness. You are in the process of moving from what used to be into what you're about to become. You're going through labor, birthing an entirely new you. So again, what he's talking about is that once you start to understand you have a scarcity mindset when it comes to money, people always think that somehow there's not enough money, right? And I talked to a lot of people about uh, the illusion of money because it's interesting that you know here in the States, we had 35% of all money ever printed was printed last year. So there's no scarcity of money. It's simply in our mind where we have this fearful that we don't have enough and we need to hoard what we have. And so when you have this scarcity mentality that there's never enough, that you're always having to hoard what you have, you're never able to move into the, actually just acknowledging the fear that you're facing, right? You're actually giving into the fear. And so what he's talking about is this heading to fear head on and acknowledging there's nothing to be scared of because there's plenty of money to go around. And this is really an overarching theme of the book, which was why I wanted to cover chapter four. The title of the chapter is The Illusion of Being Broke. So you're never really broke, right? The broke is here. Broke is a mindset. Scarcity is a mindset. It, now you can not have a lot of money, but... It doesn't mean that you can't go out and work for it, attain new skills, look at different ways to attract money, you know, have your vision board, take 
courses, learn how to invest in the stock market. There's lots of things you can do to walk into your fear. I think that that's the big thing is to realize this is all just an illusion around money, your illusion of a scarcity mindset, your illusion of security. And so I love this chapter where it just starts to really break down that there's nothing to be scared of. And in fact, the more that you embrace this, this illusion of fear of money, uh, the more that you will start to bring into your life. So the next chapter I actually want to cover is just going right after chapter four, which is chapter five. I love my current bank account. And so this is something that I talked a little bit about in Ken Honda's book too, Happy Money, where they really start to have you value money differently, to give thanks to your money, to have a relationship with it. But I also want to uh, read you a couple quotes out of here. So many people have goals or fantasies about making more money, but very few people have the goal of increasing their ability to appreciate life more. And so this is the way I like to look at money, right? Is that money is a means to an end. When I make more money, which I'm always interested in learning to acquire more skills to make more because I've been um, well off and I've been extremely poor and it's better to have money than to not. But really what this is talking about is not so much about making more money as opposed to pivoting and realizing that if I make 100,000 versus a half a million, right? When I make a half million, I'm able to give more to charities. I'm able to take my family on better vacations. I'm able to experience new food, new cultures, new people, make new relationships. And if you have gratitude for that and you can appreciate what money gives you by way of experiences are able to serve your community, then you're able to receive more, right? Because again, it's all about your mindset. And so you want to be really grateful for what you do have and appreciate the things you do have and it's what, what it's able to give you. You know, expanding your abundance is really expanding your awareness of appreciation to include those things that we usually overlook. Again, let me read that again. Expanding your abundance is really expanding your awareness of appreciation to include the things that we usually overlook. Again, this is all about if I'm creating abundance, it's really about starting to look at how much awareness I have of the things that are in my life and really appreciating those. When you're in the problem, there's no room for solutions to show up. And so again, we're starting to talk about money mindset. If you're always constantly talking about the problem of never having any money, then it's very hard to be open to receive help, to look for new opportunities that may bring money into your life. So I love my current bank account. Really just says, hey, I'm super grateful for what I have right now. I'm super grateful for my relationship. I'm grateful that my employer or my business gives me $60,000 a year. Now that doesn't mean that you can't level up, acquire new skills, scale your business, and make $160,000 a year in two years from now. But you want to appreciate what you have. You want to appreciate what the experiences you're getting now from the money that you're currently making while having the mindset to realize the more that I make, the more abundance I have, then the more abundant experiences I can have for myself and for my family and for those around me. So the last chapter I want to cover that was impactful for me was chapter 13, which is giving, something I already kind of briefly talked about. So let's just go over one quote here. Your ability to receive is equal to your ability to give and vice versa. And that is something that is a universal law that a lot of people miss with their relationship with money that Tony Robbins talks a lot about. And Tony really talks a lot. If you've ever listened to him, um, he talks about when he was a young man, he had $7 to his name and he walked, he was in a restaurant. He had just finished eating uh, what, you know, he took himself out to eat with the last 20 bucks that he had and his meal was like $13. He sees a young boy uh, who was out to eat with his uh, lunch with his mom. He stops and he gives the boy his last $7 and told the boy to buy his mom lunch. He walked out of the restaurant feeling amazing, but realizing he did no longer had any money to his name. The next day, Tony Robbins got a check in the mail for like $1,200 from a friend he had lent money to like a year previous and had written it off that he was never going to see uh, the money ever again. And so what he talks a lot about, what Kyle talks a lot about in this chapter is giving. It's the law of reciprocity. The more that you give by way of money, love, support, positivity, the more you shall receive in your own life. And Tony really talks about, you know, if I usually if I give a dollar, I get 10 in return. That's just the law of reciprocity. But again, a lot of it, especially when it comes to money, we see that homeless person, uh, we, we see, you know, the Salvation Army, Christmas time right now, you know, out ringing the bell. You had the person at Kroger say, hey, do you want to donate to children's charity? to fight children's cancer and so many of us just say no uh, no thank you uh no but really that 
50 cents, the dollar we can all afford and what you get in return for giving selflessly and not expecting anything in return is 10 times over. And so that chapter starts on page uh, 13 on 127. Pay special attention to giving. I think that if you're really looking to create an abundant life, the best way for you to get there is to buy giving more than you receive. Of course, you want to pay for your bills and whatnot and don't give more than would cause you harm. But if you really look at giving from a truly selfless perspective of I'm going to give to this charity, never expecting anything in return. I'm going to give money to my brother and never expect anything in return. Or I'm going to give this homeless person money and if they go choose to spend it on alcohol, that's fine. But my intention was to help get that person shelter for one night, right? So again, it's the way that you frame your money and the relationship that you have with money. If you have a poor relationship with money and you're constantly worried about where it's going to come from and never believe that is the cycle that you're going to continue to create. Now, if you want to flip it and start to rewire your mind to create in a life of abundance, and this is the type of book that you need to read, um, The Illusion of Money, because it's all about how to break that scarcity mindset when it comes to the illusion of money and how do you create an abundant mindset uh, where you're giving, you're having a good relationship with where you're currently at, and you're developing new skills to continue to create bigger abundance as you move in so you can give more and have better intentions for yourself and your family and for the community around you. So... I highly recommend the book, especially if you are uh, someone that wants to level up and have a different type of relationship with money moving into 2022. Uh, I would definitely pick up this book. He said it's probably about $13, $14, $15. Nice hardback book. Not too long. Less than 200 pages. Yeah, it's about 165 pages. Very easy to read. Uh, go follow Carl Cease's content as well online. Really great spiritual guy. Um, obviously, is a good money coach, a good someone to follow us to talk about mindset. Uh, but this type of uh, scarcity mindset applies to everything in life. And so if you can really get your scarcity mindset dissolved when it comes to money, man, um, that, that's probably the hardest thing for people to overcome. It ruins the most marriages, right? It destroys families destroys businesses. So if you can switch your whole money mindset, it really opens up a world of possibility in all realms of your life. So go check out the book. And if you guys haven't done so, please subscribe to the podcast and YouTube channel. Really appreciate it. Uh, the Book Legion on all platforms. And if you want to uh, follow me um, uh, at Tizer Evans on Instagram, I post a little bit about the Book Legion and a lot about my other podcast, uh, Grind, Sell, Elevate, where we interview entrepreneurs business leaders, people from all over the world who are the best at what they do. Uh, we've had some really great renowned world, um, world renowned authors on sales recently have come on grind. So elevate. So check out that podcast and thanks so much for your support with this one. Hope everyone's having a safe and, and um, great holiday season. Uh -huh.